they are abnormal. They don't deserve to live. They should be ostracized from the society. This is what they say about homosexuals in Africa. But what do you say about your friend's sexuality? This is on the streets. I am Bukumi Ayo Ario. According to the BBC, homosexuality is outlawed in 38 African countries. This could come as a surprise, but many African leaders feel that homosexuality is against the African cultural and religious value systems, but is this the reality of contemporary African society? Homosexuality in Nigeria, and I know of some people who practice it and I'm of the opinion that um, we don't really have people that are straight lesbians or gays. I believe we have more of bisexuals. I have friends who are lesbians and yeah, and gays also. The history of Africa has really shown that we have been having homosexual phenomena in this Africa, in African communities, so many African communities, including my own community. I found out through my research that in a, a community or a tribe, Anna, Wait. when you uh, Anna dies in a quiet room state, um, you have women um, always being closed with. They have husbands. They call them um, Ebe. That's a woman calling a fellow woman husband. And now these people can be enclosed for hours. They won't allow other people to penetrate, and they'll be keeping friendship between themselves. And now we don't know what happened in those closets. Stephen Murray himself documented over 40 communities that had, had sexual homosexuality in the past and even in the present. So uh, I don't know where it is on Africa. This is a human phenomenon. And this is a human phenomenon. Africans, not human beings, they are human beings. Despite these veils, most countries on the African continent have still not legalized homosexuality. In Nigeria and Kenya, homosexuals risk 14 years jail term if caught. In Algeria, it is two years. Five years in Libya, three years in Morocco, ten years in South Sudan, three years in Tunisia. Hmm, the figures go on. Only few countries like Burkina Faso, Cape Verde, Cote d'Ivoire, Mali, Niger, Chad, Equatorial Guinea, South Africa and a few other countries recognize gay rights so far. On our fixed segments, we will drive around three big cities in Africa to find out what they feel about homosexuality. Stay with us. This is Nairobi. The law against homosexuality is stringent here. These young Kenyans share with us how homosexuals are treated. Homosexuals, as in they go through a lot. They are they are discriminated from the society. The society doesn't like here. No one talks about lesbianism in open. No one says anything about it. It's like they don't exist. So the society finds it like it's lose morals and lose, yeah, lose morals. I have friends who are lesbians, but the gay ones that I know don't actually come out more than the lesbians because gays are tended to be judged more than lesbians. I also have a friend that is a homosexual. He's actually a close friend, but I don't judge him because that's what he does. That's what he likes, so I, I can't judge him. Um, I think people shouldn't be judged on their sexuality, rather on their personalities. I don't find it normal, yeah, because I'm a guy, and I can imagine as in God made God made man for woman, not man for man. So uh, from yeah, from the biblical allusion, it's not right. Even though God made man for woman, there are sometimes okay. There are two, we are living in two generations, yeah? Like, I'm 18 years old, but maybe like my grandmother or if my mom is above 45, she wouldn't agree so much with homosexuals. But judging on the moral standards, I think it's right because if someone is happy being as homosexual, they should be. If they're not, it's okay. The government is ignoring totally their homosexuals in this country. It's not saying anything, 
it's not pointing out their views and if it happens um, when they are teen shows and all all they say is homosexuality is bad it's wrong it's it's immoral and all but um, I think the government because in other countries it's legal and I think Kenya should also do the same. There was a bill that was supposed to be passed for gazing and it was actually rejected. So I don't think they're given, I don't think they're treated right. The Nigerian story is similar. The society sees it as immoral, immoral acts, and we all think that it's, it's, it's against the laws of, of, of nature against the will of God. From what I know, it's not something that is acceptable in this, this area, in Nigeria per se. It's not something that is, is welcome, welcomed yet. We shouldn't forget Nigeria as a traditional and um, a spiritual, so to say, country. Everybody, everybody sees everything from the spiritual angle at the end of the day. So with that, I was feel they would see it as bad because God himself says it is bad. I see it as a disorder, a pathological, psychological disorder that is meant to be you know, treated and needs treatment. I believe that subjects under such disorders should be treated. They are not thieves, they are not armed robbers, so they should have a right to, to themselves. Because it's not being seen as, it's not supposed to be one, um, a kind of crime, so to say, like, it's a life and death. They are not thieves. The 14 years is good. Uh, because it should be enough to, you know, want to stop people from wanting to engage themselves in homosexuality. Uh, this is an aberration on human rights. In fact, he's now trying to say that the homosexuals are not human beings. Because what is the essence of passing, uh, of, pun uh, of uh, sentencing, uh, sentencing people? Is it to punish them or to rehabilitate them? Now there have been claims that these people are one sick, or uh, that they, they can be rescued, in quote, from this uh, phenomenon. Now if this is what the Nigerian society is thinking, because that's what they were saying in the Senate, why didn't you, you pass 14 jail terms? You should be rehabilitating them. If you think that you can rehabilitate them, you should be rehabilitating them. We should also not forget that this is human nature. And if it's human nature, there is no jail term that can change it, even if you give a person 100 years. Yes, like basically that is the only way to make people stay away from it. I don't want to be biased. They are human beings and they are living things. So, well, I don't agree with what they do, but they should have rights. Gays in Kenya and Nigeria live in shadows and fear of being perpetually harassed because of their sexuality. They are not allowed to express themselves publicly in any way. As a result, most of them are withdrawn and lack confidence. For sexual and gender minorities, um, violence is there. Um, violence case, violent cases have been reported. Um, but there, is, there still remains a challenge because in a violent situation, uh, the, the, the places you would go to would be the executors of the law, the police. The places you would go to would be to get medical attention. But at the end of it, as much as the police is increasingly, not to a very great extent, is increasingly um, addressing rights issues for uh, our population, there's still an impediment because you go to a police station and if the person at the OB does not understand LGBTI issues, the, your report will be based on their questions about you, their curiosity about you. Uh, you go to, um, let's say, a lesbian woman who has been raped, goes to uh, any public hospital, if they find out she's lesbian, they'll start questioning her on, based on what they think is moral or immoral. So cases are there. We have a very huge challenge in, in making sure that reports are done. 
because also the community, the LGBTI community feels, you know, they are afraid of going to, going to the police station to report cases. The biggest challenge we have at the moment as, a, as LGBTI rights uh, activists and advocates is providing a holistic um, health care for the community because we have, uh, we have focused on the very important issue of, for example, HIV and how uh, the men who have sex with men population is one of the most at risk populations. Uh, but we, have, we are still working on how to address uh, psychosocial support. Um, on individual cases, it will be, it will be possible to establish the, the psychological effects. But in general, um, we find that you know, the lack of support groups, the lack of spaces to be yourself, um, the lack of acceptance at family level, at, um, at social level when you, when you go to church, the lack of acceptance at, uh, you know, at institutions, uh, the fact that uh, transgender persons uh, uh, find it hard to even find jobs because you, you go with your documents and they say one name, yet your ID says another name and you have to explain why you have an affidavit for all that name change. All these have um, a very grand impact on you know, the mental health and the psychological health of every other individual. Gays and lesbians are at liberty to enjoy their full rights in South Africa. South Africa is the fifth country in the world and the first in Africa to legalize marriage between same-sex couples. But in spite of South Africa's legal structures, there are still lots of traditionalists here who believe homosexual relationships are un-African and strange. We roamed the streets of Johannesburg to hear what the youth here had to say about homosexuality. Honestly, to me, I feel it's um, demonic. Because it's not just um, normal for you to leave your female friends and you going with the male, or you leave your male friends, you going with the female. So to me, it's just demonic. I think it's signs of the hand time. I don't, I don't like them when they do their thing on public or something, but if they can just go outside our view, then I don't see any problems. Honestly, I have no problem with gay people. I, I went to school with a few gay people. I, I don't see why anyone would have, I mean, they're just, they're just normal, normal people. In South Africa, it is okay. You're not pan they, don't, they don't punish you legally. They're not supposed to punish you for being a homosexual. But when our young lesbians go to report about um, being raped or being beaten up for being a lesbian, they still receive a lot of secondary victimization in our, in our, um, in our police um, services. <laughs> Nala and Fanny are a gay couple who have been living together for 12 years. However, their parents do not know this. Nala would not tell his father because he's one of those that believe homosexuality should not be allowed in Africa. My father's one of them. Although I think slowly but surely we are crossing that bridge with him. Uh, but it's, um, hey, yeah, it's, 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 that's the only thing that's been tough on our side, right? Fanny, however, is fortunate. Talking from my side, I mean, like, uh, I don't have any pressure from my family. I never came out to my family and I don't like to box myself, like to say I am, you know, so we don't talk about it, we don't go to that subject, we don't talk about it. I mean, homosexuality has been there for, for years and years yeah, and years. Yeah, ages, you know, know there's so. this um, old folks tale that uh, Shaga Zulu was, uh, was queer. <laughs> and I like to play on that a lot because I, personally, I don't believe that homosexuality is un-African. I think it's more... Um, you know, the Christian doctrines that were brought to Africa that made homosexuality un-African. But how can the African continent strike a balance between religion, cultural values and communal beliefs? My findings has been that one, that homosexuality is thoroughly African. In fact, we had more homosexual in Africa than in Europe before the advent of Christianity. 
I discovered that. I've also discovered that homosexuality is a sexual orientation. It is a biological construct of the human body. And therefore, no one can change the orientation. It's like heterosexuality. That cannot be changed. So if you cannot change heterosexuality, you can't just change homosexuality like that. I've discovered that too. And I've also discovered that we don't need this uh, intolerance in society. If in the past, when you look at certain uh, uh, ideologies that driven African societies at that time, like in Ibo, they have the concept of live and let live. That, what does that supposed to say? Even if you're having some things that are like aberration to the culture, they still allow you to stay. So we, we sh there should be sexual tolerance in society. So that is uh, some of the things I was trying to point out in my work. But I've also discovered that even the Bible supports homosexuality. No, no. It's, uh, to me, as a child of God and according to the scriptures, homosexuality is an ab abnormality. It's an aberration. It's, uh, I see it as a total rebellion to God's will and plan and purpose for man. When you go to Bua Kalesha, now you have a place where Paul said, there is neither you, you, uh, Jew nor Greek, Ma, uh, uh, um, slave nor free, man or, or woman, or man and woman. What does this supposed to tell us? In the, in the sight of God, there is neither man nor woman. We are all without sexual orientations. Now, what if you come to the issue of soul? Does soul have a sex? The Bible said he created them man and woman. And after that creation, he had a purpose for them. Homosexuality is no doubt a fact that is here to stay, but a lot of Africans are not willing to accept or even deal with it. So the question is, how do we fix it? I would say the solution to homosexuality problem in, in Africa should be, is that there should be sexual tolerance. If there are people who are having heterosexual orientation, they should also accept others in the society who, have, who they have to coexist with as members of the same society. We are, should not be seen from the perspective of our sexual orientation. I should not deal with you on that basis. In fact, I could be buying from homosexuals and I shouldn't, I shouldn't care about that. That is why in my play they say, I the idea idiot. that is the person who buys from the market does not, he does not buy a bad thing from the market. Because in the market, everyone is equal. Is equal. Now, we should see all, all, all of us as on the plane of equality. Because that is what should define human beings, not sexual orientation. We are all equal in God's eyes, so we are all equal. No one should be judged, no one should... I just think we should accept each other. Acceptance is the key here. If you accept each other, then everything is going to be okay. Because at times being a homosexual is hard enough for them. Then the society rejecting them is so much, it's just so much, which leads to suicide, just leads to so much depression and all. So I think we should all be treated equally. No one should be judged for who they are, what they do, or anything. Because it's a free world, it's a free country. Sexuality in Kenya should be legalized because it's 2013. We're not like in past ages. So, because if you're working, no one will know that you're a homosexual. So if it's legalized, people will just go back to wherever they can meet their partners and carry on with life. But right now, because it's not legalized, they're like hiding in their own shells or something. You're still watching on the street. Let's now take a look at the latest fashion that has caught the fancy of young people in Africa. times the art of tattooing has gained popularity in Africa with the African youth first adjusting to the fashionable aspect of tattooing with drawings and inscriptions on different parts of their body for a very long time the tattoo art was considered to be a demonic act and was generally associated with hoodlums but among today's youth it is not only a fashion statement, but also a form of expression. Tattoo is just an expression of what you like and maybe something you like so much you want to have it on your body. It's still an expression of colors, like when you see some tattoo, they have different colors on it. 
If I can count like 10 girls, I can see like 7 wearing tattoo. I like tattoo because it's something fashionable, for fun, and the mixing of the color. That's why I like tattoo. Tattoo studios are fast coming up in all parts of Africa with celebrities endorsing the art. I'm actually in Nigeria, you they draw anything. They draw anything. But majority is just um, religious tattoos. I don't really know how many my customers are because I have a lot of contacts on my even on my BB. The entire year 2012, how many tattoos would you remember that you drew? <laughs> that one is not possible. <laughs> even in a month, I can't I can't. Not to talk of a year. The art of tattooing, however, is not new to Africa. Researchers claim that tattooing on the body and the face have always held meaningful place in African history. In olden days, tattoos were an indication of tribal hierarchy. Egyptian women have been known to ink symbols of fertility on their bodies. But somewhere along the way, the age-old art got lost. But now, the youth of Africa have taken to it once more, and this time, it seems it is here to stay. It's now time for our inspired segment. Inspiring Africans this week is a 27-year-old Congolese who has designed the first truly African tablet and smartphones. Let's get inspired by Veron Mancon. He was first a blogger, making applications for web, windows and smartphones. He designed the French search engine called KeyForin.com and founded Africa's new aggregator Aquaba.com. Based in the Democratic Republic of Congo's capital Brazzaville, 27-year-old Veron Manco has challenged the belief that out of the 185 nations measured by the World Bank, his country is among the worst countries to do business in. In 2009, Manco registered a company called VMK, which comes from Vumbuka, a word derived from King Congo, a language widely spoken in southern and western Congo, especially in the city of pont Neuf, which means wake up and specialized in interactive communication and internet technologies for two years and a half. The idea was to come up with a computer tablet that wasn't expensive to allow as many people to have access to internet. Over the years, the computer has evolved and is no longer just accessible in the office. So our project also changed in 2007 and moved towards making a computer tablet. After years of research and technology, as well as financing from the project, then presented it and it has been on the market since January 2012. Today, his company has a capital of 250 million Central African franc, approximately 500,000 US dollars, and is the first to introduce the truly African smartphones and tablets that really reflect the innovative ideas of the African youth. His company introduced the Wayse tablet and Elikia smartphone just to provide affordable phones for Africans. The Wayse, or the light of the stars in the local Lingala language, is a small tablet roughly the size of Samsung's Galaxy Tab. It measures 7.4 by 6.7 by 0.5 inches and weighs 13.4 ounces. Wi-Fi connectivity and 4 GB of internal memory card standard. While its specifications aren't eye-popping, the price is at $300. It costs less than the iPad mini. The second product, Elikia, which means Hope, is an Android-based smartphone with a 3.5-inch display, rear and forward facing cameras, 512 megabytes of RAM, and 650 MHz processor. These phones are designed in Congo and assembled in China because Congo has no factories and production costs is higher in the local environment. 
Already, the products are sold in Congo, France and 10 other West African countries. We celebrate you, Veron Mango. Today we have traveled the streets of Lagos, Nairobi, Johannesburg and the Republic of Congo to feel the pulse of the youth and to bring you exciting and informative stories. Join us again next week, same time, as we examine other happenings on the streets of Africa. This is Bukumi Ayo Ario. Goodbye.